Hi, my name is Wayne Edge. I'm a sculptor living in Memphis all my life except for one year in California. So, how I got here. I had two uh, loving parents uh, that loved to go camping, uh, had lots of brothers and sisters. Uh, probably the natural experience from being out side and, and just hanging out in nature led me to this path of being a sculptor. Uh, my father was a scoutmaster and he took us camping about once a month my entire childhood. Uh, I learned from him and in scouting the art of lashing which is how I assemble all these sculptures. Uh, they're basic lashing techniques for building monkey bridges and signal towers and, and benches and scaffolding and constructing primitive housing out in the wild and stuff. And I've always been fascinated with uh, science, but I really never had the aptitude for the math that was involved. Uh, and I've always thought that, that art and science were very closely related. Uh, because it was the state of wonder that, that led, you know, man to progress and achieve his, I guess, status in the world today as far as upright standing human beings. I can talk about some of these sculptures and a lot of them are based on actual experiences out in the wild. Uh, for instance, this piece, the Risky Road. Uh, this past summer we took a extended road trip out west to visit my brother, my son, and another brother in Missoula, Montana. Uh, we stayed at a, a place called the Fremont Point Ranger Cabin, and it was 9,000 9, feet up on the side of the mountain. And it was actually at cloud level, and then it was like a 15 mile dirt road to, to get there. And so you've got the mountains right here, and you've got the big hailstorm and snow, and then there's got the risky road, which actually kind of balances, you know, depending on the weather and the traffic and, you know, the condition of the road. And getting up there, it was almost like you know, a motocross type thing. The road was real loose. The gravel was real rocky and stuff. So that's the risky road. I uh, got fossilized uh, hailstones, a piece of uh, lava, and then kind of a piece of silvery driftwood from actually take the plate, which is local. Um, You've got references to the river right here, these little wavy things, and then up here you've kind of got a, uh, a reference to the foothills, and then it goes on up into the mountains, and that's kind of the path west. Um, another piece. You are my sunshine. Once again, we've got found stones uh, from Pickwick Lake region. These, I'm um, thinking, are kind of Native American artifact type polishing stones. Got the white brown ones that are representing photons generated from the sun. Uh, so, you know, this piece is like a homage to my wife and just, you know, every morning, you are my sunshine. You know, I can't wait for the day to begin. You can almost feel the photons crackling across the horizon in the morning. Uh, once again, it's got references to the river uh, because Memphis has got such great spiritual soil. And that's probably been to the river. And it's just a lot of coolness. 
So, another piece dealing with the weather and stuff is beat down, and it's uh, walnut found stones and uh, worked glass. And it basically is just kind of representing uh, one of those big rainstorms, and the country's been getting lots of it lately. Uh, you know, nature and all of its wonder does beat down the human race on a regular basis, and it's, you know, it's, it's hard to, to comprehend sometimes as to, you know, the way and the why of, of, of nature. So, you know, I find it best just to kind of idolize it and, uh, you know, hold it in all respect. So, uh, another piece. Uh, this one is called the tallest tree in the universe, and it's once again based on uh, a tree in the uh, Redwood National Forest that at one time was the tallest tree in the known universe, since we're the only people here. Uh, anyway, they logged, they logged up to the hillside on the far side destroy the canopy and the sunlight was able to pierce the canopy and actually burned off the top 30 or 40 feet of this tree and it eventually died and, and it's actually no longer the tallest tree in the universe but it's still pretty big. Uh, and it's made from found glass, uh, cedar and once again uh, the little found stones. This time I'm kind of using them as like stars because the tree actually just, they're so tall that they do reach up into the heavens. It's, it's truly a, a wonderful sight to, to be in the Redwood Forest. Uh, so we got that. Uh, another piece, uh, which is kind of about natural phenomena, is this piece called... You know, that's another one of those crazy phenomena where you see all these blackbird 